thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of Mayor Benito and myself, uh, we want to bring greetings and congratulations from the city of Austin. Um, it's, a, it's a great honor to be here today. I have to, um, before I really get into what Liz has done, I think of Liz Walker when I turn on Channel 4. <laughs> you know, um, it, it just, she, she's always been there. And, and I, I, know, I know that when, when I had a chance to meet Liz uh, on the campaign trail, uh, Liz would be talking to me about spirituality and religion. I'd be thinking about Channel 4 and, and, and all the, the shows she did. You know, and, and the, when she was on Channel 4, and she was on TV, um, when you think back on it, it's like she was in your living room. And she brought a sense of warmth to the city of Boston and some of the news that she was delivering uh, was tough news uh, all the time, when you turn the news, you know? And the fact her, her, I don't wanna say her role, but her calling, uh, is an important calling, particularly at this time in the city of Boston. You know, I've had com many conversations with him and you know, and, and you know, We've talked about, and he's given me advice on development and how we can move development along and, and advice on different things. And the one issue that, that we both talk about is, is, is violence, violence in the street. And, and the great people behind me uh, on the altar are a big piece of making sure that we finally get to the root of violence in our neighborhoods, throughout all of our neighborhoods. And the great people in front of me, uh, we need you to pray and we need you to work with us, to work with us all. Uh, and we need to work with Reverend Liz Walker, to the great work that she's going to do, because I, I've, I've watched and listened to the messages that she has put out in the community. And she talks about violence, and she talks about domestic violence, and she talks about inequality, and she talks about God's spirituality. All the things that are very important to our city, very important to our city, and, and it's great to, to be here. I'm honored to be standing here to bring greetings from the city of Boston and the other elected officials. There are many elected officials in the room uh, who I know will be going on later on, but you know, as a new mayor of the city of Boston, I need you to be my partner. I need you to be my partner. And I'll tell you, um, one of the things that Reverend Walker called me on, uh, actually texted me the other day, we were talking about trauma. There's been a lot of discussion around treating trauma in Boston. And, and the Reverend called and texted me and said, you know, I really wanna, I wanna tie into what you're doing. So I called her back and I was talking to her and she had already done so much. So I guess my question to you is I need you to help me with the trauma. I need to help you help me in making sure that we make this a great and safe city. And thank you and pray for us all and pray for the city as we will pray for you. And congratulations. We are all honored to be here. And again, on behalf of me and myself, congratulations. Good afternoon, everyone. Give an honor to God. Um, I host a back to school block party for peace at Warren Goddard I've done this over the last four years. And this past summer, last year, my house was a crime scene twice. Um, and my city council, as well as Minister Joe, Reverend Joe, um, have been helping me for the last four years give away school supplies. But because my house was a crime scene, we did peace walks with um, city councilor Tito Jackson. And um, our theme was enough is enough. From that, I met Reverend Liz. Um, and I didn't know who she was immediately because she had on street clothes and a baseball cap. <laughs> and um, she asked, what could she do to help? And I was shocked because I'm like, okay, she's from TV. <laughs> um, but from that, she came to my home and she was alone. There was no publicity or anything. And she said, what can I do to help? And we built a relationship. And from that, we were able to help the boys in the area who were the most troubled obtain jobs. And, and then she asked, what could she do to help me specifically with my cause? And I just thought it was the most amazing thing in the world because I don't represent an organization. I've been doing it for four years and I go door to door and I say, can I have a pack of meat? So <laughs> I thought it was very beautiful that she was more than willing and it was nothing behind it. She was just very heartfelt and for that I thank you.
the um, the community needs her, she's always there available. To her. Like, and then that's that's great. Um, also, just like to thank her just for the beautiful work you have done for me and also for, for my friends because I was once a high risk trouble team. And then Riz, um, pardon me, sorry, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> but I passed the, she played with the seed of strength in me. Also, she played with the seed of encouragement and also in peace. And she told me that no matter what I do, I always believe in myself. And with that, I just thank you for the encouragement. Tall. <laughs> really tall. Hi everybody, I'm Suzanne Ray, instructor of development at the Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center right up the street in Roxbury and a leader with the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. And it's such an honor and privilege to be here on behalf of Boston's interfaith community to welcome you, Reverend Liz Walker, as pastor of Roxbury Presbyterian Church, and uh, to celebrate this important milestone in our collective history together. In my own faith tradition, it's customary before public speaking to recite a verse from the Quran, a prayer that Moses said before he went up to confront the Pharaoh. He asked God to strengthen him and give him the tools to articulate a clear message. Moses prayed, God, my Lord, expand my chest, ease my affairs, and untie the knot from my tongue. So in the Muslim tradition, you say this prayer and you're good to go. But this is Boston, and we are interfaith. So that I say the prayer and I take a moment to channel my inner Liz Walker. <laughs> Because there's no other force as dynamic, as charismatic, as Reverend Liz Walker when she steps up on stage. She is a force that can probably part the Red Seas. If you know what I'm talking about, they hear an amen. As an interfaith community, Roxbury Presbyterian Church was that seed that sprouted our work together. It was conversations in the basement of this very church that decided the founding of the Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. Today, we not only have Christian, Jewish, and Muslim dialogue, but we have real partnership. And that is due to the vision and strength and leadership and courage of this institution. It is through the work of GBIO that I've come to know Reverend Walker and her church's undeniable passion for social justice. Whether tackling crime in the Warren Corridor, turning around the Dearborn School, or advocating for an end to gun violence, Roxbury Presbyterian Church is an example of faithful healing in the city of Boston. Though education and public safety are high-flying policy issues, at the nucleus of all of these are individual lives. Lives that need support, individuals who need a sense of security. We are blessed to have such a faith institution that cares and provides human security to our sisters and brothers in need. You are an inspiration to us all. May God bless you, Reverend Walker, with the tools of success, touch you with his grace, and empower you with his light. God bless this congregation, bless us all, bless the city of Boston. Reverend Walker, welcome as a leader in the interfaith community and a partner in faith. Has been that organization, and we are proud to call them our partner. 
From the first day of school, we have their volunteers welcome our teachers and staff, and they give them yellow roses, accompanied with a welcome breakfast, just saying thank you, thank you for teaching our kids. And working in middle school, we don't often hear those thank you from our kids. So it's always appreciated to be valued and to see that our work is good and that work is powerful. Oftentimes, our kids come to school and they don't have warm coats or warm hats. And Roxbury Presbyterian Church over the years has donated warm winter coats for every child at our school. They have donated warm hats. students, so that is an amazing achievement. They've donated warm hats, warm gloves, just making sure that those needs are met for our kids. They also do quality programming in our school. This is the third year that we've had a successful Saturday school program held right here at this church for our students. And through this program, our students have seen gains in their academic enrichment, where it's in the ELA for vocabulary enrichment, meaning comprehension, and we even see their academic grades gain, um, I'm sorry, improve, as well as some of their standardized test scores, just from those students who participated in the program here. And we also want to thank Rossbury Presbyterian Church because they really value us as a community school. Less than five years ago, our school was slated to be closed. And in conjunction with Rossbury Presbyterian Church and other community partners in the school, they said, no, not the dear one. We're going to save this school. And furthermore, we want the school to be better than what it's been. We want the school to be a STEM school. So they helped us take a dream into reality. They lobbied school local officials, state officials, and our school is now proudly called the Dearborn 6 through 12 STEM Early College Academy. kids can see dreams come true with the work of community partners. But this partnership doesn't happen in the vacuum. You need dedicated staff, dedicated volunteers, quality programming and planning, and that takes resources. So I implore all of you to continue to support RPC and their social impact center so they can continue to pay it forward to our students, to our schools, to our communities, and continue the great work they've been doing for us. So I thank you, Reverend Walker, and your leadership, and I thank the members of RPC and the Social Impact Center for all they've done for the Dearborn and all they continue to do. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. You know, given the way those who have come before me have spoken, I will attempt to be very brief because there's no way I could replace or supplement what they have already said. Uh, they've already spoken to the testament of this church and to the testament of its new leader, Reverend Liz Walker. And so let me just say fairly quickly that it is an honor to be here among you on behalf of our governor, Deval Patrick, who could not be here. It is always a pleasure for me to stand in his stead when I get to do it. Let me say that I do not bring the force of voice that he does, but I will do my best. I will not supplant his words, and so, lest anyone report back to him that I did not give his words, <laughs> let me say briefly that on behalf of the Patrick administration to Reverend Elizabeth Walker, on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I am pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation in recognition of your installation of past, as pastor of Roxbury Presbyterian Church and dedicated service to Boston communities. And as I said, I won't supplant these words, but I will have the temerity to supplement them. <laughs> you know, I was born right here in Roxbury, and it is a pleasure to be in the heart of the community that not only sired me, but has guided me and inspired me. To be among you, to be a part of this celebration is like coming home. And let me say, there can be no greater calling than to serve the Lord, and Reverend Walker has accepted that calling, but I believe the second greatest calling is to serve society 
and she has accepted that calling as well. And so on behalf of the Patrick administration, we say thank you for accepting your calling. We stand ready to serve with you, to serve the community, and we know that blessed days are ahead. Thank you.